Prime one, stop making your quarter scale statues huge. Stop. Stop. This is James from Men Honor Comics. Welcome, comic and pop culture fans. And today we are looking at the Prime One exclusive Black Manta taken from the Injustice 2 video game and Shark. Guys, I just got back from vacation. I was supposed to record this last week and I just couldn't squeeze it in, so we're gonna do it now. You are gonna wanna leave a comment below. Every time you do, it enters you in a contest to win some prizes once we hit 500 subs. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Before we get into the review, let's do a quick backstory on this dude. This underwater mercenary, David Hyde, or Black Manta, has been Aquaman's greatest villain since his first appearance in Aquaman 35 in 1967. Black Manta has a singular hatred for the King of Atlantis. For decades, Manta's true name and motives were shrouded in mystery, hidden behind his menacing, oversized helmet. In modern times, however, his true motivations have been revealed. But no matter the era, Black Manta has always inflicted a special kind of pain upon his archenemy Aquaman thus cementing his reputation as one of the most ruthless and driven criminals in DC history. All right, let's dive into this review, and we're going to start it off with a category that I've never started a review with, and that is proportions. Yes, you got that right. Prime One did it all over again. What am I referring to? I mean, they made another quarter scale statue closer to a third scale. So, um, one of my favorite statues ever is the Batman New 52 by Prime, Prime One and Sideshow Team Up. It's absolutely great. And I got it out of the box and it was perfect, but too large. And that is the same here, but this is actually to the point where this is so overscaled that it just doesn't work for me. Um, I can't justify it in any way. He's not a super human being that's like, you know, nine foot tall in real life. He's just a dude. So, you know, I put him next to any statue and every statue I can find. And he just, he dwarfs them. His hands are like the size of the Catwoman premium format's head. His ass is the size of like Lobo's chest. Like... I don't know why Prime 1 can't get this right. This is actually my fourth Prime 1 statue in a row uh, that's quarter scale, that's too large. And they actually got bigger and bigger each time. The Superman and the Batman are each doable. This is just a little bit too large and does have to be sent back, which is weird because statues are all digital when they make them these days. So why can't you just do a little research with your competitors, with Sideshow, Iron Studios, all of it custom, and just figure out that the normal quarter scale height tends to be anywhere from 18 to like 23 inches. You can make them tall as you want if they're jumping off something, that's fine. Um, what's an example? My Sinestro is extremely tall, so like 30 inches, but he is an accurate quarter scale. This, nowhere near accurate. This is like anywhere between one-fourth and one-third scale. Um, also, the base is huge, and you've got a shark sticking out the side, even though the shark is amazing. So I already have so much beef with this statue that I put it everywhere in my statue room, and it doesn't fit next to anyone. And it's a shame, because you're going to see in the review, I think the statue is essentially perfect, and I have to send it back just because it wasn't, it doesn't fit with any quarter scales. It looks awkward, it's just gigantic and it, and it doesn't work. So we are going to give the proportions a three out of 10. All right, now let's start it off with where I usually start it off with the base. We got a lot to look at. All right guys, so this is honestly one of the best bases I've ever seen. I'm happy to show you here now. I'm going to start it around by bringing it around here. Check out this manta ray. Uh, hint, hint. This is black manta. And this actually feels like a real stingray manta. It just unbelievably 
excellent, the amount of work that they put into that. Bringing it around here, we see this super cool octopus just chilling. A surprising amount of detail put into him. Looks absolutely great. I think the weakest part is actually the rock. I think there's a couple areas that look um, a little ho-hum, but it does have a cool water effect down here, which uh, displays really nicely. Coming around here, a spot that you won't see very much is all these little starfish chilling back here. I think that looks pretty cool. I think the star of this show though is the resin, awesome resin, um, what do you call that? The splash, the, the waves exploding around the rock. It just looks so good. Uh, the shark is honestly, like if this was just a statue of rocks and shark and like if it was just the animals, that would even be fine right there. Um, it looks perfect. It, I think they literally shrunk and froze an actual shark. Like it, it's out of this world amazing looking. It even has a similar texture to it, to a shark. He actually comes out of the waves right there. Look at this. From this absolute monster of a perfect base. All right guys, base. An easy 10 out of 10 on this piece. Super impressive. Now let's check out the sculpt, the paint, and the colors. All right, guys. So let's take a close look in here at this statue. Let's look at his boots first. There's one hiding down there and going up. It's clearly a very um, realistic take here. There's a couple spots that I think actually could use a little bit more detail, but then I look at it again, it's like, you know what? That is what a pad really looks like, so it's okay. Uh, the scuba suit is definitely a realistic feel and texture. If you touch it, it has uh, that bubbly texture that you can see right there. Uh, moving on up, the abdomen and the rest of the anatomy is pretty much perfect. Um, there's nothing I would really change about it. It's really good. Real strong breastplate there. I like that it differentiates from the rest of the body. The arms and the musculature looks great. Cool little dagger here. This um, maybe looks a little plasticky, but that's okay. Zoom out here for a bit for you. The water continues up here, and it looks good. Very realistic water. Absolutely great. Now, again, I mentioned that I don't like the size of his hands, or really the size of him as a whole. But we're just looking at the sculpt and the paint here. We're looking at everything. So it's perfect um, in match with everything else going on on this body. I love his uh, weapon right there. Unfortunately, I have no idea what to call that other than Halo Sword. Sure. Um, his light, his eyes do light up. That is with them lit up right now. Kind of hard to tell in the video, actually. His neck area... Looks really interesting. It makes me wonder, like, what's the engineering behind this helmet there? It kind of looks cool. His ne neck looks a little fat, but maybe that's part of the armor. So, hard to say. Uh, bringing it back here. Giving a quick glimpse over here. With the amazing shark and the amazing ass. He's got this cool jetpack thing. Kind of looks like a manta once again. With the wires coming out. And you actually get different wires. Hold on right there. If you are opting to do that head. But if not, these are the ones you'll be using. And they look really good. I think the colors on this are perfect. The composition of the colors ratio to the, the grays and everything, it's perfect. You get these sharp bits of bright red. Um, the gray isn't just gray, it does differentiate, and there's actually a slight purple element in with the armor, which looks really good. You get the nice, realistic flesh tones of the animals, and the blue is perfect. The, the white caps and everything. The, there's so much bits of color in this piece. This is honestly some of the best distributed color I've seen in a statue thus far. All right, guys. Going across the board. You ready for this? Paint, 10. Sculpt, 10. 
and colors 10. Congratulations, Prime One. Good work. They bring around here because now we're going to talk about the design and the pose. So I'm actually going to start by talking about the pose. Um, and the pose is actually really cool. I do like how he's doing a little mermaid, Black Manta style, jumping out of the rocks. Super heroic, super excellent. Of course, he's not a hero at all. Um, it just looks really good how he's got one arm down and one arm up. It's an extremely powerful stance. One thing that's a little bit odd is he's looking kind of up, which makes sense. He's jumping out of the water, but it can be a little awkward to display. Uh, it's almost like you have to display him low, which is kind of rare for statues, but it would definitely help to store him low. Um, he does have, let me see if that turned on yet. Yeah. You can actually turn his eyes on and make them glow, which is a really cool light -up feature. You guys know I love light -up features. Um, I almost wish they could be on every statue. Some simply can't. No light -up feature would ever work on the Swamp Thing, but hey. Uh, unfortunately, this head, which I think looks really cool, um, looked better in the pictures, um, and there's no light component to it. I actually was hoping this would have the light component, and that since it doesn't, kind of hurts it for me, and I'll never really be displaying it with that. Oh well. But the composition of this piece flows really nicely. I mean, you have interesting notes of where your eye should be looking at down here with the stingray and the shark, uh, but I do like how the water splashes up in the background a lot and how he leans left. It's a nice, perfect composition piece. You never want your statue to be dead center. Uh, I think we statues have moved away from that. You want an interesting kind of piece that can you know, do something without sacrificing a, a bad pose, like Cheetah. Uh, the design was fantastic, although I actually should start doing unboxing videos because this is hard to put together. Um, the instructions said you put the base down, then you put this rock in, and then you do the water. That's completely false. I had to actually take him off. I had to get the rock under my arm. I had to put the resin water effect under there, snap him in, and then carefully place it into this base. It was actually really difficult. Uh, it was kind of a two-man job, to be honest with you. Um, so the base is a little hard to put together, but you know, whatever. It looks good. Um, he keys into the rock very nicely. There's no sway on this piece, except for when I move this rinky-dink table. No sway at all. I mean, it's another design masterpiece. I feel like I've seen a lot of design masterpieces lately. Um, but yeah, it's really impressive. Obviously, you're going to be terrified of breaking these off through time. Just be really careful. This one you should try to put in a display case. Problem is it's too big because they lied about it being a quarter scale. Yeah, but even down with the shark, I mean, it was really cool to have him like coming out of the water. It certainly ties the, the themes of Black Manta together here. There's even a uh, uh, manta ray down there. It looks really awesome. I swear this shark is actually shrunk, guys. It, I'm like, even the texture is like, that's that's literally a shark. Um, really good job on that. Uh, unfortunately, it does hurt what you can put next to it because he does stick out a bit there. But you know, if you got the space, you got the space. But guys, this is one of the more impressive pieces I've seen from a design point, even in a pose point. I wish his head was angled straight a little bit more. So guys, we're going to give the design a 10 out of 10, and we're going to give the pose a 9 out of 10. Not bad. Alright, now, my favorite category, coolness and likeness to the character and to the piece. So we're going to start it with coolness, and it's uh, top 5 cool statues I've ever had in my room. The bursting water coming out of it, the red eyes, the shark. The suit, this suit, if I haven't talked about it enough, it looks amazing. It's the pose, the octopus. There's so much you get here, but it's also not overwhelming because they balanced it well with the paint and the colors. So it's a truly impressive piece. Um, it's one of the coolest ones I have in the room, like I said. So we're going to immediately just give it the 10 out of 10 for coolness. This statue's getting a lot of 10s, actually. Uh, the likeness. 
is very accurate to black mana. Uh, they're going off of the Injustice 2 video game. And interestingly, they made him more gray here than he seems in the game. The, gr the game does have a grayness to him, but there's nowhere on him that's black. No black colors anywhere. It's all a very realistic take, kind of like scuba suit sort of thing. Uh, yeah, looks pretty cool though. I don't think I'm going to knock for any points because of that. This is a unique artist's interpretation of Black Manta, and I applaud them for it. It looks really good. The helmet looks iconically Black Manta of that whole, like, how do you fit a head in there thing. I've always wondered that. Um, this helmet looks really cool, too. I just, again, it needed that light-up feature so bad. That would be really uncomfortable for a helmet. Yeah, so, I mean... I'm gonna give the likeness, let me look at him one more time. Yeah, I mean, that's black mana as fuck. So we're gonna give him a 10 out of 10 for the likeness. And as we discussed earlier, he also got that 10 for the coolness. So guys racking in the 10s here. All right guys, last category, price. Um, what blows my mind is that this is from the same line that made this Superman and that's making that upcoming Wonder Woman. And if you want exclusive versions all around, Superman was $1,000. Wonder Woman was $1,000. And yet this was $800. $200 left less and arguably way more intricate light up features. Uh, incredible animal design um, it's essentially it's essentially a perfect statue it's like I wish I had like a little shrink ray and could just shrink it down just a notch it's a basically a perfect statue with the exception of they completely cannot get a quarter scale figure done right so what you get here is really impressive you'll be hard pressed to spend a whole eight hundred dollars better anywhere else um so we are gonna give i can't believe i'm doing this i can't believe i'm about to say this but i'm gonna give the price 10 out of 10. all right guys this is one of the most impressive pieces ever that i have to send back to prime one such a freaking shame man i would have loved this in my collection i had it for a week now and i just i couldn't do it I put him next to the bigger guys, and even next to the big guys like Darkseid, you know, Brainiac, he still looked really big. It just, it's too awkward. And considering he's not a super tall guy, he's not a, he's not a Darkseid, he's not a Lobo. He's just a guy from Earth with a penchant for dressing up like a scuba diver. That's it. You just can't justify the height. So unfortunately it has to go for me. Someone who wouldn't care that much and doesn't mind overlooking the fact that he's too big would love this statue. I'm actually like extremely sad that I have to send this back because I think it's it it's one of my top five favorite statues that I've ever had in the room. So disappointing. But also amazing. <sighs> These are the moments where I wish I wasn't so picky. I've had to get rid of a couple statues before that I thought were overscaled, a couple that were underscaled, because they just, it doesn't look right. And it looks like I have to add this, unfortunately, to that pile. Didn't want to do that. But let's go ahead and give him his final score. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Unfortunately, the next time you see a room tour video or something, he's not going to be in it. But that's okay, at least I got to see him for less than a week. Um, appreciate him for the great statue he is. Thanks for stopping by and enjoying the review. This is Mint Hunter Comics, and keep on.